Richmond, California has some of the most beautiful Bay Area views in the world. And it also has, well, sometimes a troubled history. And in the last few years, one of its city council members, vice mayor, was repeatedly assaulted while she was serving the public good with horrible instances of racism and homophobia. Well, a film has been made about that called Against Hate, and with us tonight is the filmmaker, Brenda Williams. Welcome. Thank you. So now, you are a Richmond resident, correct? That's correct. So the idea for this film came about because you watched this going on, correct? That's right. I actually was at one of the council meetings with my 14, my then 14-year-old daughter, and she was p trying not to pay attention to what was going on, and something was said on the stage, and she said, Mommy, can you say that to the mayor? And I, I thought about it. I said, you can say anything you want, but there are things that you shouldn't say. And, and it got me thinking about freedom of speech, what it means, where the lines are drawn, what we should do with that freedom. You know, it's interesting. As we tape this interview, there is a battle going on now in New York City about an ad campaign, which, of course, is based in uh, illuminating what still exists, sadly, anti-Semitism. But some of the words being used are just horrible. Yes. And it's brushing up against the ideas of what what is free speech and what is hate speech? And I guess that really is a lot about what your film is about. It, it is. And I, and I think a, a lot of what came out of this is that sometimes you have to self-monitor. We are responsible. We're humans. And there are certain things that we, we, we have to do and certain things that we can't do. And that, that was an important lesson to learn through the film. You know, as a black woman sitting there in that hall, listening to some of the things that I've heard that were said against uh, the vice mayor, Javanka Williams, his last name, correct? Javon, my, hers uh, is Beckles. Beckles, I apologize. Right. Uh, vice Mayor Beckles. What did that do to you? Well, part, part of it Part of it really dealt with how I feel as a human, how I feel as yeah. a person. I, I, I just think that's horrendous. It's, it's awful to have to sit through that as a working woman. I mean, she's doing her job. She's mm -hmm. been elected to do this job. I would never go to my job and expect to be treated that way, so I don't think that she should expect to be treated that way, nor do I think she should be. So as a black woman, as, as a queer woman, as a parent, as a filmmaker, as a human being, I, I found all of that just way Yeah, overboard. I mean, it was, it was a real toxic soup. I mean, it's kind of like, I mean, I've seen the footage, I've spoken to Javanka, uh, Mayor Beckles, and you're like, wow, is that homophobia? Is that racism? Is that sexism? It's like, boy, just a lot of angry people. Yeah, it's, 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 a, fra it's a fear of things that are different. People mm -hmm. are different. They're, they're not seeing eye to eye with the way she sees things. And so rather than accept that and, you know, work for the greater cause, people are attacking those those um, points and those the things about her that are personal that have nothing mm -hmm. to do with her ability to run the city. Now, besides uh, Javanka, besides uh, Vice Mayor Beckles in the film, who else talks to us about this? It's not just people from Richmond who got involved in this film. Um, so there are, there are there are a couple of people. There's um, there. I mean, I interviewed some really fantastic people. Um, one of the people that I interviewed is Reverend Hassan. I, I met him through Javanka, Reverend Hassan, Kamal Hassan, and Reverend Lawson, and they brought a religious perspective that I thought was just awesome. I thought it saved my life. It made me feel like, mm -hmm. gosh, I'm, you know, this is this is something that people need to hear. So there was talk about there was a lot of the religious talk, a lot of the um, demystifying what the Bible says, and they really got into it. And I thought that was very powerful. Um, there were some experts in terms of the um, um, in terms of the fire, the Chevron fire, because mm -hmm. that was really important in the Richmond history. And um, there were other people who were concerned. There's, um, I interviewed a gentleman who turned out to be Roseanne Barr's brother. I had no idea. <laughs> so that, I thought that was fantastic. But he runs a city a center. And they're very concerned about um, what happens and how people who are observing these city council meetings who might be queer are feeling when they see this, because it really does hurt everyone. It's not just Javanka. It's the community right. at large that gets hurt. What did you learn about yourself as a mother, as a member of the LGBT community, and as a Richmonder from making this film? Did any of your perspectives or points of view change? I, I realize how important it is to tell our own stories. I mean, looking in at this situation, it looked like an ordinary city council. but. 
I, I thought that the things that Javanka went through and the things, the, the way she overcame this was monumental, and I thought it was a story worth telling, and I appreciate the fact that I can tell stories that are important to me, and I don't have to rely on anyone else to tell that story, because mm -hmm. no one else is going to do it. So I, I learned and, and just had it reinforced that it is powerful when you can tell your own story and you can show the world or anyone interested what the truth is, aside from, from some other format that they might have. Now, Richmond, California has now an openly gay police chief. Uh, a lot has been written lately about, oh, people are looking for quote-unquote affordable places to live in the Bay Area. We're in the middle of this huge economic boom. Richmond's mm -hmm. affordable. Um, do you worry that Richmond is going to, pardon the phrase, and some of these problems be whitewashed? Well, it's certainly, I mean, it's possible, but I don't think the people of Richmond will, will, will let that happen. Uh -huh. I think there's a very vocal group of people in Richmond, and even when they're, they're not talking, even when they don't agree about things, they, they, they still talk about it, and I think that's the good thing. So it's the way that we have to learn to do it so that we can progress forward. I, I think that's important. Now, the film is currently about to go into the festival circuit, correct? correct. So where's the first place we will see this film, and where do you hope it will end up? Well, the first place we'll see it, you'll see it is going to be at the Quack Map Film Festival. That's the Queer Women of Color Media Arts Project, and that will be June 14th, and I'm excited about that. The festival is a three-day free film festival, and it's it's a happening event every year. I always enjoy it, but this year I'm a little more well, nervous yeah. because I have a film there, so <laughs> yeah. So that's the first showing of the film. Um, but your hope is that this might go on to be shown on PBS and yeah. possible, I mean, do you think it could be considered for an Oscar and documentary? <laughs> Uh, nomination? I, I, I think it has I think it's gonna have a life. I think there are a lot of topics that are covered in the film and I think they're covered well. I think they're um, you know there's no shyness about talking about the topics that we do mm -hmm. deal with. So I, I think it has a lot of potential and it's an educational tool and I love the way the Richmond people who have seen it have responded to it and they're very excited. Yeah, how have they how has Richmond responded to it? Well the ones who the ones who've seen it are really excited to see the full film. They they've only seen a fifteen minute um, clip of it and they're very excited because they've lived this you mm -hmm. know they sat there through this for months and months and years and to see it I think it validates for them that this was an important issue the Chevron fire was important the homophobia dealing with that Javanka's triumph over um, Chevron in that election these were all really important things and made a huge difference to us and I, I think they're happy to see it um, portrayed in this way do you think Richmond is at the beginning of a, of a new cycle. I mean, I know this is, for instance, the 110th anniversary of Richmond uh, becoming a, a city. It's got a rich history, like many histories. It's complex. Mm -hmm. It's gone through some good times. It's bad times. Where do you see Richmond now as, as a city, as, as your home? Yeah, I, I see it. It's a, it's, I love the city. I mean, it's beautiful. There's some beautiful trails. As you know, as you, you know, there's some trails there. There are neighborhoods, lots of pockets, neighborhoods. Point Richmond is gorgeous. Point Richmond Downtown is. Richmond is going through a real renaissance, mm -hmm. pardon the phrase. I yeah. Mean, yeah. So, so I, think, I think we've got um, the Berkeley Lab moving in there, we hope. And so there are a lot of things going on in the city. We're close enough to San Francisco, close enough to the Marin area. And in our own city, there's just a lot to do. Big arts. I'm on the Arts and Culture Commission. Lots of things to do there. So um, we're 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 pushing. We're pushing. We're we're gonna be we're gonna be good. Uh, we're gonna be good. Lots yeah. of people moving in. So I think it's gonna be exciting. So now, every filmmaker once they get the first film done or their latest film done, I should say, is on to the next one. What do you see coming next? Well, I, I, I've been working on a piece on human trafficking, and I don't know if it's going to end up being the narrative or documentary style. I've really enjoyed doing well, this. Well, hopefully not a tragedy. I mean, I'm sure if you've been following the news lately about what's been going on in, in Italy, I just spent uh, some time there, and that's front page news there every uh, every day. Yeah. But you're talking about it exists here within our own backyard. Talk Absolutely. to me a little bit about that film. Well, it's um, I'm working on it's a narrative right now, and I'm I work I work a lot with the financial aspect of a human trafficking and and crimes such as that so I wanted to look at a human more human story and deal with the human life of a person who the life of a person who might be trafficked whose family is trafficked so it's it's taking its toll sort of going through um, all of the aspects of human trafficking so that when you're done you can learn something about it well yeah and how do you find a personal first-hand story to tell him that I mean it's not like Hi, I, I've been trafficked. I'd like to sit down and share my story no. with you because if 
if you do, you're not going to be around much longer. We're, we're in a destination um, place here in the Bay Area, so this area is, there, there's a lot of trafficking here. Mm -hmm. But working with a, um, a narrative and not working with a documentary, I actually get to make it up. And so um, I've got my character Lucky. She's, you know, She's a sharp character, and she through, just sort of like Javanka took us through right, what right. was happening in Richmond. This character takes you through the mm -hmm. human trafficking. So you. But even though, it. as you say, it's narrative, and you've got someone you're using a character to tell it. Mm -hmm. You must have had some firsthand stories of people you spoke with to get this character. Absolutely. What was that like? How did you find them? Um, I, I, well, at Reverend Kamal Hassan's church one Sunday, they had a human trafficking day, and that you know they actually brought in someone who had been trafficked and she talked about her experience. And um, I've done a lot of research on the topic, and um, I've talked to, you know, agents and the, you know, the, that actually do that for a living, and they've shared stories with me. And so there's a lot of information there. It's, it's horrendous. Do you think the average Bay Arian has any idea that this is a destination for that? No, no, no I, they don't. And in fact, when I was reading the script at one point, one of the one of the gentlemen who was listening, he said, "I I never thought about the person serving my food as possibly being trafficked." And and it was just an eye opener for them. Uh -huh. And how big, I would say, a problem, but how big of a reality is it here in the Bay Area? It's, I mean, can I walk out of this studio and go get a cup of coffee or something to eat and be served by someone who's been trafficked? You you absolutely could. You could walk past them on the street and, and just not know it. There's a silence around it. It's not something that they're going to share with you because of the fear and, and you know, any repercussions that might happen. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's it's fear. So. And what stage is that film in now? Um, I'm I'm working on the, the script, <laughs> so not, not, not nearly there. It's right. very hard because it's so emotional and right. it's, it's, it's a tough topic. Last question, we've just got a few moments left, about the film Against Hate. How did it change you? It, it From that day your daughter said to you, Mommy, why, why are they saying those horrible things about, you know, mm -hmm. Mayor Beckles? I, I, it, it, one of the things that happened for me is it made me realize that silence is not an option. Um, when something is wrong, you have to work against it. You have to speak out against it, and you, you, you have to. Somebody has to be the one who takes the stand, and I, I always want to be that person. I don't want to be silent. Great. Well, thanks for the film. We look forward to seeing it Thank in June. Thank you so much. Next Thank up, you. our conversation with Willie Wilkinson, talking to us about winning this year's Phoenix Award and his ongoing work on behalf of the transgender community. We'll be right back. Thanks.